More on this development, and Nemo Bassett joins us from Sham El Sheikh Agent for his perspective on this development. Mr. Bassett, thank you for joining us on TVC News at 10. Uh, what exactly are your thoughts on carbon markets, which are now identified as a tool for countries to cut their greenhouse gases and meet their Paris Agreement commitment? You know, the reliance on climate, on carbon markets, or what we call market environmentalism is clearly a very wrong approach. It's a false solution to global warming because the market created the climate problem over dependence on exploitation of nature, uh, pollution from burning of fossil fuels. And the solution to global warming is simply to, to stop depending on and burning fossil fuels. Because this word is put, it was as put in between 75 to 85 percent of the carbon that we have in the atmosphere that is creating the problem that the world is confronting, uh, combating right now. Uh, and so when African governments or others begin to promote carbon markets, they simply changing the conference of parties into a, 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 into a carbon trade fair or a carbon stock exchange. And what this means is that polluters will continue polluting and then those who cannot pollute as much as others are polluting uh, would now sell the extra space they have that they couldn't have taken up to those who are polluting too much. So everybody continues polluting and those who don't pollute as much get some money. And so this is like blood money. It's not going to help to reduce the amount of carbon in the atmosphere. It's not tackling the problem at all. It is, it's a warped way of looking at the way nature works thinking that except you put monetary terms into concepts some of which are fictional, therefore you cannot really carry out any, any, any real action. You well, know, the thinking that money can be equated to the processes of nature simply doesn't solve the problem. All right. You have referred to this as a wrong approach. What then would you now propose as a real solution to the climate crisis? The, the, the real solution is very simple, and this is what makes it appear to be complex to those who are creating the problem. The climate change is caused by human activities primarily, the burning of fossil fuels, and it's clear that the world has to shift to renewable energy. This is number one, uh, the number one action that needs to be taken. And then for poorer countries, vulnerable countries and territories who are looking for finance and who are emitting this kind of false solution because it brings them money or there's a promise of money, what they have to do is to demand for the payment of climate debt. The global north, those who have polluted the world, those who have created the problem, have a duty to recognize their historical responsibility and to pay for it. It's not a question of not having funds. There's funding. The world, the rich countries spend close to $2 trillion every year in warfare and military armaments. These funds can be used to construct and repair the damage done in the world by reckless activities of burning fossil fuels. But then, Mr. Bassi, how exactly should these world leaders be held to account to pay these climate debts, as you have referred to them? You know, the, this issue has come up a number of times at various in the past, but the, the leaders of some powerful nations simply wave it off that, look, this is not going to be discussed, that they're going to discuss historical responsibilities. But I believe what African leaders and leaders from the global south should do is to stand their ground and let it be known that we have suffered historically and we're suffering currently. Even the ag argument that Africa has to sell gas and continue to extract gas and crude oil so as to meet energy needs does not really work out because most of the extraction is still sent to the polluters to continue polluting. The gas we're extracting, the oil we're extracting, the oil for export. Look across Africa. All the pipelines, all the infrastructure are leading to seaports because they're to be exported for so-called foreign exchange. We need to, our leaders need to take their place and re-examine the entire geopolitics. And we are the majority world, for goodness sake. So I, don't, I do not see why we cannot all together said, look, we have to move the world forward. The solution is right here. Indigenous ideas, communities have, have managed the environment in a way that's sustainable. Why can't the world learn from those who have, who have a, a track record 
of defending species and, and using working with nature in a way that is not disruptive. This is what our leaders need to you know, begin to talk about. All right, then we know that already there are questions about having some uh, of these uh, pollutant uh, you know, companies actually being the ones sponsoring some of these talks on uh, climate change and uh, renewable energy. Thank you very much for sharing your perspective with us. Uh, Dr. Nemo Bassi, environmentalist, thank you for your time on TVC News at 10.